Praise the Lord! Welcome everyone here at All for Jesus Church. We are now on our Sunday worship service. We are a full gospel, non-sectarian, non-denominational church. We believe in Trinity that our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are one God. Let's sing our opening song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Praise God! Lord God, 
through your love, Lord God, and mercy and grace in each day that you have given to us, Lord. Our heart, Lord God, is overwhelmed. And our heart is full of gratefulness, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us for all our sins, Lord. Whatever you've seen in our hearts, Lord. Whatever you have seen in our actions, in our deeds, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins. Today, Lord God, we celebrate, Lord God, with all the with all our hearts, Lord God, for all the goodness you have done in our lives, Lord. For without you, Lord, truly we are nothing. For without you, Lord, truly that we cannot do anything, Lord. Lord, we depend on you. Our lives depend on you. Our strength depend on you. And we lift up to you, Lord, our brothers and sisters, Lord, into thy hand, Lord. Whatever they're, they're going through, Lord God, in their lives, Lord, we believe that you are our God who will always make a way in their lives, Lord. You will give them, Lord God, the comfort, Lord. You will give them, Lord, the deliverance, Lord Jesus. And you will give them, Lord Jesus, the healing, Lord God. Whether it is physical, mental, or spiritual and emotional, you will give it to them, Lord God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for you provide for all the things that our brothers and sisters need in their daily lives, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles, Lord, you have done, Lord, in in our lives, Lord God. The new life alone, Lord, you have given to us. The hope, Lord God. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for the promise, Lord, for the promises, Lord God, you have given to us that they never fail, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for our gatherings today. Let it, let it be, Lord God, be a sweet aroma before you. As we sing praises to you, as we give you praise in our tithes and offering, as we listen to your words, Lord, let our hearts be receptive, Lord as we receive your words Lord God hide my father under the shadow of your wings and let your will be done Lord in our midst thank you Lord for you are in our in our service today for through for two or three gather in your name you are in our midst we give you praise we give you honor in Jesus mighty name amen, amen and amen praise God first Peter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Truly that today is the day that we remember that our Jesus Christ has risen. Amen. Praise God.
We worship you, Lord God, with humility in our hearts, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are great, God. You are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah.
us to our tithes and offering message for today. Praise God. Thank you, Minister Melissa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus, in the midst of us. Uh, let's open our Bible in Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 30. Every tenth of the lands produce grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord. It is the it is the holy to, to the Lord. Amen. So everything is from the Lord. He's our source of everything. And let's bow our head, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your goodness in our lives, Lord. As we give our tithes and offering, we recognize your generosity in our lives. You are the giving God. We can never outgive you, Lord. You are God who blesses and our lives. The blessing is from you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving us the financial blessing. Amen. And thank you, Lord, that you have been providing good jobs and businesses to everyone in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the physical and mental strength that you provide each one of us, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that you're always with us, Lord God, and you are blessing us, Lord God, and thank you, Lord God, that you give us the best, Lord God, in our lives, in our jobs, in our businesses, and in the ministries, Lord God. Oh, thank you for everything you've done in our lives, Lord God. And Lord, we continue to pray, Lord Jesus, again next week, that to be with us, to be to our lives, to our families, to our jobs, to our businesses, and to our ministries that you've given and bestowed us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for loving us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for healing us, Lord God, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything, Lord God. We bring back the glory and honor just my name amen 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 praise god here at all for jesus church we believe that your tithes belong to your local church but if you believe that all for jesus church is your home please go to www.allforjesuschurch.com for more details may i call now my beloved daughter to lead us to our scripture reading for today praise god Luke 24, verses 1 to 7. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Amen. They went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pastor Isaiah T. Sun Guan Jr. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us here in All for Jesus Church on our Sunday worship service. And we are also live in Facebook as well as in YouTube. Today's message is entitled, Why Do You Seek the Living Among the Dead? Father in Heaven, in the name of Jesus, 
We come to you today, Lord. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for this gathering us again once more, Lord, this morning. We thank you, Father, for all the presence of these people who are listening to us, Lord, who are following us here in All for Jesus Church. We thank you, Father, for this day. And be with us today, Lord, as we declare your holy words, Lord. And let your message be a blessing to others, Lord. And first of all, Lord, forgive our sins. Because our sins always separate you from us, Lord. So that you will not hear our prayers. But you said, Lord, in First John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us unto all unrighteousness. We thank you for your promise, Lord. We thank you for your words, Lord. We thank you for your divine mercy towards us, Lord. And first of all, Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. Without him, Lord, we can do nothing. Without the shedding of the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, there is no forgiveness of sins. We thank you, Father, for this day. Be with us today, Lord. As we declare your holy words, as we declare our victory that you have given unto us, cover us with your most precious blood today, Lord, and protect us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Hide me behind your back, and let your glory be upon us, Lord, and let your name be lifted up in this place. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text is found in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. How many times have you heard the Easter story? I'm guessing most of you have heard it on and off and off and on all your lives. And that's a good thing. One should never tired of hearing amen, the incredible story of God's grace and love and the Easter story and the Christmas story is the most well-known story of all but it can be a problem amen. familiarity can be emotionless and disinterested after you have heard the repeated story for a hundred times. It can become routine or so that you are not careful. If you are not careful, you can disregard or ignore the message. In Luke 24 verse 1, I'm reading in NASB. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they have prepared. The word early dawn equalizes and equates to sunrise. When the sun is just coming up, when there is just enough light to see, madilim dilim pa. Unlike as the time of the day, but as a symbol of something far greater in the Bible, light stands for disclosure and exposure, amen? And this is the first act of creation. Let there be light. Genesis 3 verse 1. To walk in the light is to enlighten to walk in darkness is to be ignorant, unaware, uninformed, and unconcerned to God's presence. And so, what we have here in the opening words of our story is a wake-up call, amen? A miracle of unfamiliar sections is about to reveal Writer, look, goes on to say in verse 2, 
and the foundation stone rolled away from the tomb. This part of the story has always amazed and surprised us. What would have the women have done if the stone had not been rolled away? The stone was far too heavy for them to move on on their own. Masyadong mabigat para sa kanila. The good news is, before the women got to the tomb, God had already prepared the way when the stone had been rolled away. The entrance to the tomb was opened. We call this enabling grace as it enables sinful mankind to believe how God knows our needs before we ask Amen. and looks out for us even when we are unaware that there may be trouble ahead sometimes we recognize God's divine intervention and say thank you Lord and sometimes we don't either way God is faithful God's love is constant and everlasting day in and day out back to our story the story continues the women who had come to the tomb early in the morning entered the tomb but they didn't find the Lord Jesus body verse 3 as much as we may like to jump into conclusion here this is not the critical point and moment of truth of the story. The empty tomb itself is no proof of the resurrection at this point. Amen. All the women know is that the body of Jesus Christ is missing. Who could have proved it? And why? They don't know. They are mystified and confused in verse 4 while they were perplexed about this. Behold, two men stood by them in brilliant and radiant clothing. The women are frightened. You would be too, while angels, as holy, lovable figures with wings on the backs, and the ring light over their heads. The Bible makes it clear. <laughs> Angels are to be feared. Amen. They have the power to redeem or destroy. Angels are messengers. Amen. So that when they speak, you better have to listen. And this is what the angel said in verse 5 letter B. I am reading in NIV. Why do you look for the living among the dead? This question, as in our lesson today, can be disturbing and affecting. These women who had come to the tomb from Galilee to anoint the body, as it was the Jewish custom, when they got there, they found a stone rolled away. Naturally, they went inside and suddenly two angels appeared and asked, Why do you seek the living among the dead? In verse 6, there is, He's not here. He has risen. Well, think about it. Where else would they have gone except to the tomb? They weren't looking for the living. They are looking for a corpse. Amen. Hindi, hindi nila hinahanap yung buhay. Ang hinahanap nila yung bangkay. They came, they came to make sure Jesus got a proper burial. Again, they were acting in faith. Their motives were pure. They were devoted to Jesus and on go and going about the, about business in anointing his body where else would they have expected to find him of course in the tomb 
where he had been laid. These two women were not seeking a miracle. They were seeking a fulfillment of prophecy. They were not seeking to hear from angels or to be proclaimed the gospel of a recent savior. They were plainly and simply in the cemetery seeking a dead man. As things turn out, they never anointed the body as there was no body to anoint. Just as angels appeared to proclaim his resurrection, yet this proclamation came in in the form of a question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? And all of heaven already knew, amen, what the earth did not. We wept. Heaven rejoiced, amen, yet we still make the same horrible mistakes. Instead of seeking the living, instead of trusting and following the risen Savior and the abundant life, He alone can deliver. We seek truth and life and hope among what is dead and decaying. Around is there. Many focus on three famous words from the gospel. But there is so much more to the story. It's a message of hope, amen, for all of us. The angelic words proclaim he is risen, amen. The Bible tells us. In Luke 24, verse 6, verses 6 to 8, He is not here. He is risen. Yes. Remember how He told you, while He was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Like the two women, most of the time, we forgot his words, amen, and had to be reminded. We trust in those who say, peace, peace, when there is no peace. We trust in prospect and lucky break. We trust in ideas on an, an our own defective and imperfect logic. When the truth of God is, is staring and looking us in the face, telling us we are in the wrong spot, amen, seeking the wrong thing. We get lost and go astray around tombs of failed human wisdom. When the Son of God is alive and working in our midst, He is risen. That it's meant to be encouraging, but seeing signs after signs, bearing the same unmistakable and absolute declaration, instead leaves us with a single repeated persistent question, now what? <laughs> now what? Yes, he is risen, but now what? Imagine, the same question was hanging and lingering in the minds of the disciples when they first heard the news after three and a half years <coughs> of walking with them Jesus their friend and master was dead their hopes for the restoration of the kingdom of Israel were crushed and shattered to pieces everything they believed in appeared to be in shambles and then the news he is risen Incredible, unbelievable, impossible, but that's what the angel said to the women who had come down to his tomb, only to find it empty. All the disciples and over 500 believers, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8, would come to see the resurrected Christ. Amen. There could be no denial, no room for doubt. He is alive. He has risen, amen. Yes. Now what? The disciples found an answer to that question. But it took time. It was Jesus himself who gave them their first clue. 
Then he said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead all the third day and repentance and forgiveness forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Luke 24 verses 46 to 48. Jesus suffered for a reason. Amen. He died for a reason. He rose for a reason that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. The problem with sin is that it corrupts heaven, it destroys, it causes pain and suffering to ourselves and to others. God cannot and will not abide sin, heaven, because of its destructive nature. God justly established the penalty for sin, and all sin as death. Sin requires a life, amen, and the power of Christ's death is that it pays that requirement, amen, for all of those willing to repent of their sins and accept the sacrifice. But it still doesn't answer our question. Christ died to pay for the penalty of for our sins. But now what? Where do we go from there? What do we need to be doing? Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans is loaded and packed with powerful and expressive questions. And many of them are centered around our repeated theme, now what? Apostle Paul asks, what shall we say then? <laughs> what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning? So that grace may increase? No. By no means, amen. <laughs> we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Yes. Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. Amen. We too may live a new life if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Amen. Yes. For we know you, that our old self was crucified with him yes. so that Amen. the body of sin might be done away with and that we should no longer be slave to sin. Amen. Yes. Because anyone who has died has been liberated from sin. Amen. Amen. Romans 6 verse 1 to, to 6. In I be. Yes, Christ is risen. But that's only half the story. Yes. The other half is that we must rise too. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul Amen. has Amen. answered our sensitive and affective question. Christ died for our sin. Yes. Not so that we could continue those sins so that we could be free of those sins and leave behind the lifestyle that produces them. Life after repenting and accepting the sacrifice of Jesus is anything but business as usual. <laughs> Using the forgiveness that comes to that sacrifice as license and permit to continue sinning is like going to a dry cleaning shop, getting a suit or an outfit dry cleaned, just go around in the mud with it. Babalik sa putigan, babalik sa lubluban. Second Peter chapter two verse twenty two.
self-defeating event, Apostle Paul explains that the old man, in other words, the old us, determined to disregard the perfect law of God and live no matter how we want. It needs to be crucified, amen, yes. put to death alongside Jesus Christ. And once we have that commitment, then just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also, we also should walk in the newness of life. Romans 8 verse 13, God's plan didn't end at the resurrection. Set the stage, set, set the stage for the rest of His plan and the rest of our lives along with it the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is where we start amen it, it, it is where we acknowledge our shortcomings and failures and our sins this is where we recognize the need to hold ourselves accountable to God's standard yes. and it is where we embark on a lifelong journey, amen. In other words, it's a committed and uncompromising pathway to follow the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. It is not an easy journey, amen. We were going to make mistakes. <laughs> we were going to come up short. More, than, more often than we have liked we were going to miss the target and find ourselves in need of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ again and again. But despite all the difficulties, all the hurdles and the rough terrain is standing between us and our goal. This is the journey that ends with hope, amen. The Apostle Paul encourages us to run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand throne of God Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 Jesus died but he is risen, amen. More than that, he now sits, he now sits at the right hand throne of God, serving as a high priest who was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of our need. Hebrews 4 verse 16 We have a high priest who not only intimately understands the difficulty of our journey but who even died so that we can succeed. Amen. That the same high priest Jesus Christ the very Son of God now we exist at the firstborn among the brethren. Romans 8 21, a symbol of hope and guiding light, encouragement and strength for all those who seek to enter the family of God. Yes, He is risen. Death has been defeated, amen. Yes. And Jesus is forever alive. We serve the risen Savior, amen. He is the only one. He is in the world today. We know that He is living. Yes. Whatever man may say, we see His hands of mercy. We hear His voice of cheer. And just the time we need Him, He always near. He lives. Christ lives today. He walks with us, amen. amen. He talks with us yes. along life narrow way. Ask yourself, how can we know He lives? He lives within your hearts, amen. amen. He lives within our hearts. To God be the glory. Amen. 
Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this message. We thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who has risen, Lord. I know he is alive, Lord. He is alive in our hearts. He is alive in our lives, Lord. We trust in him, Lord, because you give us to us, you give you have given us to us, Lord, for our for our repentance, for our salvation, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your Son Jesus Christ, for your great mercy. We thank you for your great mercy, your loving kindness towards us, Lord. Bless each and every one of us as we declare our victory, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Truly that the devil is under our feet. You know why? Because Jesus Christ did it all. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. able to keep you from falling. I have to present you with faultless before the presence of His glory and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless.